Hello, I am Pierre Dobodiansky, modeling and simulation based engineering coach in Thales. I am supporting the engineering teams in Thales to adopt modeling and simulation uh, practices. Today, we will discuss the use of simulation on top of system architecture models. When designing increasingly complex systems, we need to master the behavior of the solution we will deliver throughout the engineering lifecycle. Arcadia methodology and Capella allow engineers to share a common understanding of the force in solution and to secure the solution definition. In some cases, engineers need to execute the architecture models to early validate the specified behavior, to perform architecture trade-offs, and to provide a reference for further detailed implementation. So before going deep in the detail of this topic, uh, it seems to me important to have a quick reminder on Arcadia. Arcadia is a system engineering methodology that drives you to adopt certain perspectives to ensure the consistency and completeness of your architecture design. Arcadia brings four uh, perspectives and in each of these perspectives we have an objective to, to fulfill. In operational analysis, we don't consider the system, we just focus on the stakeholders. And here, in this perspective, we want to uh, identify what the stakeholders need to accomplish. Um, we want to evaluate the, the operational context. We want to identify the operational processes that, that happens uh, in, 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 in the operational context. So basically, we want to secure the conops. <laughs> then in system analysis, we consider the system as a black box and we want to define the system requirements we, in order to feed the system requirements document. So here we, the, we want to, to define what the system must accomplish for the stakeholders to contribute to the stakeholders mission. And then uh, we have the logical architecture and the physical architecture also known as conceptual architecture and finalized architecture. Well, here we consider the system, uh, the, the definition of the system, how the system will work and how the system will be implemented. So in this perspective, we are looking at defining the requirements on the, the allocation of requirements on the subsystems and components. And also to, to secure the contracts we will have with uh, other subcontractors. So what is important to, to keep in mind is when we add simulation on top of this model, we also uh, keep in mind that we have to uh, adopt the same um, point of view to build the simulation in a given perspective. And this simulation must contribute to, to fulfill the objective of the perspective. When we start to model um, in Capella or any other MBSC tools, we very often use a lot of diagrams to define the, the solution, to define our system. Because in each of these diagrams, we consider just a small part of, of uh, of the system. We maybe focus on uh, one capability or we want to focus on the on the mode of the system. We, or we want to capture one scenario or maybe we want to to capture the, the structure um, of, uh, of the system or of the a part of the functional, functional analysis uh, regarding one capability we want to provide. And Thanks to Capella, it's, it's, it makes it really easy to, to be quite confident in, in the correctness of, of the, the overall solution definition because uh, Capella ensures the consistency of, across all those diagrams. Thanks to Capella, we, we, we are already quite confident uh, in, in, in the correctness of uh, of the solution definition. But we still have a lot of questions to answer or to be very confident that our system is, fulf is fulfilling all the requirements and our system is really contributing to the stakeholders mission. 
For example, we can wonder if is everything useful or justified? Here you don't really need simulation to answer this question. Arcadia already brings the concept of functional chains and scenarios. And if you are adopting um, an engineering driven by functional chains, then you are able to, to secure the solution definition um, looking through this functional chain. Because the functional chain is basically describing how the system is, is fulfilling the, the system capability the system offers to, to the stakeholders. And um, the functional chain involves your system element. So it means that if an element is not involved in the functional chain, it means that it, this element is not contributing to the value the, the system brings to, to, to the stakeholders. So it, it's really a very powerful approach in order to justify your um, solution definition. Another question is, is the system definition complete and consistent? Here again, we don't really need as, as a first step, we don't really need a simulation to answer that. And Capella provides model validation rules in order to check a lot of things in your, in your models, such as, for example, are the capabilities described by at least one functional chain or scenario? Or are all the functions allocated to components? Or are all components have at least one function allocated? So it's, it's really the kind of questions this model validation rules are answering in order to help you to verify the completeness and the consistency of your models. Another question is, are non-functional performances met? Here again, um, we can, of course, uh, leverage uh, more advanced simulation capabilities, but uh, for simple uh, analysis, we can leverage the dedicated add-ons on Capella that uh, helps you to perform automatically uh, perform performance analysis for non-functional performance. But there are also a lot of questions that are not answered uh, by Capella yet, and uh, those are the the following questions are the ones that uh, where, where simulation uh, comes in and can help a lot. So for example, does the system definition allow the system to work as expected? Yes, it's a really important question. So the, the, we, we here we want to, to secure the fact that does your system architecture as defined really allow you to, to achieve the expected behavior? For example, let's consider you have a mod machine with uh, transitions that are triggered by functional changes. And here in, in Capella or any other uh, MBSC tools, it's really hard to, to, to verify that the, 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 the emerging behavior uh, of, of these mods and, 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 uh, and functions uh, are really what you expect and are the synchronization between the execution of the functions and the execution of the mods machine are really working as as you expect and, and all, are all the transition well configured uh, to, to to meet the expected behavior or another thing is about uh, the existence of the, the definition of the function and change may, may, maybe you you miss uh, a function and changes to achieve an expected behavior and if you don't execute the model you you will not see the, see this problem and another question is, does the system behavior meet stakeholders' expectations? So here it's really hard for the stakeholders and the, uh, and the voice of customer to, to look through all the scenarios you have captured and uh, to, to, to visualize uh, mentally if, if these are really the behaviors they want. You know, um, so here simulation is really a powerful tool to to start a discussion with customer about the, the, the expected behavior of the system. <coughs> Another question is: Is the system architecture optimized? Here again, we can leverage simulation of uh, of of the system uh, of the system architecture. 
in order to um, to add parameters of the on, on the system architecture and to optimize those parameters uh, against um, several um, scenarios so another question is what is the best architecture alternative here again simulation will provide um, data about the performance of the system given each other architecture alternative and based on this data you will be able to choose um, the, the architecture and to justify your choice. Another type of question more on the safety side is what is the failure effect? What is the propagation of this effect and how can I mit mit mitigate this uh, this propagation or this, or this, this effect? And what is really the criticity the, uh, of uh, of this effect? So here again, you, you can simulate the, the, the behavior of the system. You can add a failure mode on, on your functions or components and uh, look at very, very early in the design process, look at the failure effect and how, how does its effect propagate uh, at the system boundaries, not only on the, on the component boundaries or where, where, the failure, um, where the failure occurs, but really at the system boundaries. So all, all of these questions are not meant to be exhaustive, okay? It's just a sample, just to give you a sense of what type of question we can have and where uh, simulation can help. So when we start to build a simulation model, the challenge is to keep that, that model consistent with the system architecture definition, because actually the simulation model rep represents the, exactly the same thing that the system architecture de de definition, or at least a part of the system architecture definition. So th that means that the simulation model and the system architecture definition are sharing the same data, the same um, interfaces, parameters, functions, definitions, modes and states. So it means that to build the, the simulation model, we need to translate um, in some sort um, the, the information uh, captured in uh, the system architecture definition into uh, another language that dedicated to, to simulation model. And of course, we will not have a single simulation model, but a lot of uh, simulation model one simulation model to answer one question or maybe a t one typology of question and we also need to ensure the consistency across those simulation models it means that the way we build the simulation models needs to take into account this um, this need for consistency so translating information and keeping consistency is really an error prone process uh, and it's time consuming and it doesn't uh, bring added value. So it's really a good opportunity for automation. And that's why we have developed this bridge between Capella and Simulink, MATLAB Simulink, to automate this task. <clears throat> so the demo for today. Um, today, we, as I said, the simulation can be performed at um, any of these Arcadia perspectives. But for the demo today, we will focus on the system needs analysis. So the simulation we will put in place are adopting the same point of view um, that is required by the system needs analysis. It means that we are not focusing on how the system will provide the system capability, but much more on what the system should do to provide uh, the the system capability so it's really on uh, the system as a black box and we don't consider the solution uh, on how do we implement uh, this so really uh, the functions that will be executed uh, are, are, are must be considered as specification of the behavior so the system we consider for the demo is a drone um, we will focus on a functional chain you can see here, which is composed of five functions, three inside the system and two functions uh, in uh, uh, external actors. And in addition to this functional chain, we want also to consider a mode machine, 
which uh, handles navigation modes. And what we can see is that this mod machine has some uh, transition triggers coming from a functional change um, involved in this functional chain. So we have an interaction um, between this functional chain and the mod machine we want to secure and we will have an emerging behavior uh, coming from the, the interactions uh, between this functional chain and the mod machine. Furthermore, the functional change are defined by with exchange items and complex data structures used to, to, to de define the data carried by the functional change and also so to, in order to simulate uh, the functional chain and the mod machine, we need also to define this complex data structure in our simulation model. So we first will work on the mod machine. We, we, we will build the simulation model of this mod machine and validate the mod machine um, individually. But to work on this mod machine, we have to define the complex data structures that are carried by the function and change that triggers the transition. So we will also export the data structures from Capella to Simulink. Then we will work on the function and chain. And here the goal is to detail the specification of each function involved individually, and then to integrate them together at the function and chain level in order to validate them um, in the context of this functional chain. Last, we will integrate both the functional chain and the mod machine to validate the emerging behavior coming from the interaction of these two elements. To get a, a vision of what we will have at the end of the work, here, we will first have the simulation of the mod machine you have on the right, which will represent exactly the same mod machine that the one in Capella. One thing of interest is that during the building of this mod machine, we keep the, we, we, we keep the traceability between simulation model elements and the Capella elements. This is really important in order to, to ensure the consistency and uh, to to uh, iteratively uh, update the models. So here we have the unique identifier um, existing um, in uh, the two environments. And then we simulation model of the functional chain here on the right. And we can uh, interactively uh, play with the functional with interactively play with the functions in order to to validate the behavior of of the drone and especially the behavior of the the avoidance uh, obstacle so here is a mod machine captured in capella the goal is to build a simulation model of this mod machine sharing the maximum of data across the two modeling environment. So I will use a bridge to initialize a simulation model with a maximum of information directly um, coming from the Capella model. So here in the mod machine, we have several um, modes and sub modes with transitions. Transition can be either triggered by function and change, for example, like this one, but the transition also carried trigger description and guard. And for example, some other conditions are not really formal. So it's just description that explain what must happen for the transition to, to, to be valid. So here we can see how mod machine expressed in Capella is not um, executable right away. It means that we will need to to refine a bit this mod machine in the simulation environment in order to achieve um, a formal description of the mod machine. 
So to initialize the simulation model, we have to export the, um, the model elements from Capella to Simulink. <clears throat> so here is a, my machine, is a project explorer. I want to export to Simulink. I select the type of transition I want to perform. I can select several mod machines at once, if, if, if relevant, and then we are done. So now the transitions are just created an ML core file that I can copy paste in my MATLAB project. Once it's based in the MATLAB environment, I can import Capella elements. <clears throat> so the import will create a new simulation model with uh, several information that are coming from the Capella model. So here we can see we have two models, one for each mod machine I transferred. <clears throat> and if we are looking at the system analysis mod machine, which is our focus for today, <clears throat> so I got um, a state chart here initialized with the um, with an input port to be able to connect the functional change that triggers the transition. And in the state chart, I have all the modes that are defined in Capella. I have all the transitions uh, created as well, and a bunch of information uh, attached to this to to the transitions. So I have the trigger descriptions. I have the, um, the functional change that triggers the transition, and it lacks the the word that I need to to manually add. This is something we will integrate in later release. So I will move on to the updated version of this mod machine. So now I have detailed the transition to make them formally expressed in order to, to be able to execute this model. I also made a choice of implementation here to get the behavior of these uh, triggers here, vertical control negative for three seconds. So th this is not an implementation choice for the solution, but just an implementation choice for the simulation of the expected behavior. And now we, to be able to, to simulate this model, I need to define the complex data structures that uh, carry the functional change manual motion orders. Because here we can see that we want to access to the vertical distance parameter of the, this function and change, and actually uh, it is defined by the exchange item drone controls in Capella. So I will now export the data structure in order to define in the simulation model this data structure uh, to be able to compile and build the simulation model. The data are defined here, so we can see in the drone controls we have an exchange item element called vertical distance, but we also have the auto takeoff, auto landing, auto flight, and orientation we use in this uh, mod machine. So here, for example, we use the auto landing, auto takeoff, and so on and so forth, and, and auto flight. So we have to export that in order to define the data structure in the simulation model. To export this data structure, we will export the data, the data data package, where the exchange items are defined, and the exchange item element, and also the classes used to type the exchange item element. So same thing, export to Simulink. This time we choose the data packages transformation. 
finish. And now I just copy paste again this MLCO file and import data. Here's data. So in the transformation, data are transformed um, into elements stored in a data dictionary file in Simulink. And we can see how it defines. So the exchange item data dictionary is linked to the data data dictionary. And we can see we have in the data data dictionary the classes defined as bus here and in exchange items uh, data dictionary we have also bus but this time defining the exchange item so we have the exchange item drone controls with five elements vertical distance auto takeoff auto landing auto flight and orientation and each of these element is typed by the class uh, it relates to so once these data structures are defined in the data dictionary, I can then reuse it di directly in the model. So here, for example, I can type the function and change with the bus exchange item drone controls. The ground distance, I can use the physical quantity distance defined in Capella typing distance dot data type. Now my model is ready to be compiled and executed. So now that my mod machine is ready to be executed, I can uh, build um, a test harness in order to unit test this, this mod machine. This is what I've done here. So I have a test harness that reference my mod machine in this block. So if we go, go into this block, we have the, the mod machine. I have a test sequence and assessment block here that stores the scenarios I want to execute and, and uh, integrates also some uh, um, checkers that, I, that are some properties I want to verify at some point in the scenario. So here I have four scenarios to test the manual, uh, the manual flight, the auto flight, the manual flight with uh, uh, various way, with a different way to, to land, uh, and um, also the, the toggle between manual and auto flight. So these are four scenarios trying to explore all the diversity of, uh, of scenarios. In the scenarios, I have steps with action. And uh, in some of the action, I have this verify statement here that verifies that I, my system is in the expected state. For example, I send the manual takeoff command and then I check uh, later on if I am see if the active mode in, is the manual takeoff mode. I will execute the four scenarios in a batch mode. So here I have the a basic test campaign with a test suite and with one test case uh, that has a uh, four iterations here, one iteration per, per scenario. And I can run all the four scenarios at once. On the fourth scenario I executed, I have the results. And I can see I have two scenarios OK and two scenarios that failed. Um, so I can investigate further here uh, to, to better understand why my scenarios failed. 
So here I have all the fail, uh, the fail states here. Um, and here again. So I, with, with the various signals logged here, I can further investigate why my scenarios are failed. Um, this is actually because here I, um, this is what Capella defined. So, so this is a design error um, in, in, in Capella. This is because the, the trigger here is uh, activated whenever there is something that change in, uh, in, in the functional change manual motion uh, orders. So every time the, the operator uh, send a command, I switch to the manual mode. And that's not really true because if we go back to Capella and look at what is inside the manual motion orders functional change, so we have the, the exchange item drone controls, and in this uh, functional change we have the commands um, uh, for for to to switch on the auto flight, uh, auto landing, and auto takeoff. It means that if, even if I press a command on to switch on auto, automatic mode, uh, I, the way my state machine is defined, it will switch to the manual mode uh, if I am uh, already in, uh, in the automatic mode. So that's false and it needs to be solved. So I made this uh, fix in my simulation model. So I made the fix in my simulation model. I have a new uh, input in my state chart with a pre-processing here of the manual motion orders, where I try to detect a change coming from all the, the action item elements uh, related to the manual control of the drone. So now um, I can run a game the test. Now everything is, is passed. So I fixed the design error that we have made in Capella. And now I can choose fix the Capella model as well or not if it's not relevant for for the system architecture uh, uh, point of view. Additionally, I can access to model coverage metrics to evaluate the maturity of both the specification and the test. Here, we can see that some transitions are never tested. A short recap. Um, so far, we have done the, the simulation of uh, the state machine, and to, to do so, we have first initialized the simulation model with the Simulink uh, bridge from Capella, and then we also exported a, um, the data structure definition from Capella in order to specify the data type of the signals uh, used in the simulation. And um, in order to have a, a formal description of the state machine, so we can execute it, we have refined a bit the initialized model. So with this executable model, we are able to simulate the state machine and to verify it in a unit test. Next, we will now focus on the functional chain. We are going to export all the functions and the functional changes involved in this functional chain. And we, we will initialize a bunch of models, uh, both function model, fun model that, that represents the behavior description of the functions, and a, a functional chain model that implements the structure of the functional chain. So here is the functional chain of interest we want to simulate. So first, we will uh, export this functional chain in uh, the Simulink environment. So we will export all the functions involved, the five functions involved, and the functional changes 
that are all also involved in this functional chain. The functional chain is here, and we exactly do the same steps we have done uh, earlier to explore the data and the mods and state machine. This time we select the functional chain to, um, export. And we copy paste again. Import functional chain. Okay, so all the data have been imported. If we look at um, the files chain generated. We see here that we have the functional chain model. We can open it. The functional chain model is just a model that references all the functions and that links all the functional the functional changes uh, involved in the functional chain. Okay. Function model are also uh, jet generated, so I have five function model. And each function is just initialized with their ports. And we each port also um, is defined in terms of data types. So here, here are um, the, the data types used by each port is, is already defined. Regarding the data types, we have access to it through the data dictionary here. And each function has its own data dictionary where we can store additional function parameters. For example, for this function, move and orient drone, we have a data dictionary, move and orient drone, that references the data dictionary used to store the function and changes and categories. And here I have defined all the functional changes as buses with the previous uh, the previously created exchange item data dictionary and the data di data data dictionary. So here, for example, if we look at the manual motion orders, we have one bus element drawn controls that is typed by the the bus representing the drone control exchange item. To get a better understanding of the structure of all this file and how they referenced each, each other, we can look at the dependency analysis from the functional chain model. Okay, so here we have the functional chain model that references the five functions. Each function and functional chain model are linked to a data dictionary. And those data dictionaries are used to reference the functional change and categories data dictionary. And this data dictionary references all the data dictionaries required to define the functional changes and the categories. So now that we have this initialized uh, functional chain model and all the initialized function model, we can start to specify the behavior of each function. And then we will use this functional chain model with a test harness in order to validate the functions in the context of this functional chain. Okay, so now I have specified the behavior of each function. We can look at it, for example, the move and noyon drone specifies the flight dynamic of, uh, of, of the drone through a very simple tr uh, transferred function. We also have some um, other functions that are um, defined using MATLAB code, and so on and so forth. So I have created all these functions uh, individually and tested it uh, individually. And then now I have integrated them 
in this functional chain model and I created a test harness in order to validate those function in the context of a functional chain. So here is my test harness. In the middle, I have the functional chain. And in the, the test harness, let me uh, to play it interactively or to run a bunch of scenarios in batch mode. And I also created a visualization tool in order to uh, be able to play with this test harness interactively. For batch, I have created uh, assertion block that automatically checks um, data compared to expected value. Let's start the simulation and play with the drone interactively. So here in blue is an obstacle and in green is a sphere of detection of obstacle. So green sphere in the middle here is a um, collision space for the drone. So the goal here is that if the drone is detecting an obstacle, it should activate the, the obstacle avoidance algorithm to move away from the obstacle. So I go up. Okay, I can turn going to the obstacle and oh, I have an obstacle. And it appears that the drone is rightly moving away from the obstacle. Maybe, maybe the obstacle avoidance uh, algorithm is a bit too hard because the reaction is is, re is really hard uh, and uh, it should be a bit smoothest. And this is the kind of thing we can we can very early verify with with the simulation and especially at the system analysis level with the system as a black box we we try to 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 really to well capture the expected system behavior so now just to sum up what, what we have done so far um, we have focused on on the functional chain and we have exported all the functions and functional changes involved in the functional chain. So the export from Capella to Simulink created a functional chain model with all the function block and the functional changes. And for each function, we have the export, the bridge, has created a function model that is referenced by the functional chain model. And each function is initialized with its ports, and all the ports are data typed. With the data structure carried by the functional change is described in data dictionaries. So this way, thanks to the bridge, we have an initialized frame where all the, st the structure of the functional chain and the interfaces are already defined, and we can just focus on the specification on, of the functions ensuring consistency with the function definition in the system architecture model. Furthermore, thanks to validation, we can very early validate the function specification at the function exchange level. So the last step is to integrate together the mode machine and the functional chain. So that is what we will see now. We have the two actors and inside the system, we have the three functions and the mod machine. And we can run it together in order to validate the emerging behavior coming from the interaction between the mod machine and the functional change. And actually, this type of uh, phenomena is, is really hard to capture and to, to verify and validate uh, with descriptive models. That's why simulation plays a key role here to enable system architects to further secure their solution definition. So to conclude a few, a few key takeaways. First, with simulation, we can even better communicate and um, 
we can make sure that we all understand how the system is expected to behave. We can further secure the, the solution definition uh, thanks to simulation as an early IVV uh, mean. And we can also use simulation in order to optimize the solution definition when we consider several alternatives or if we consider parametric architecture. One of the challenges when we start to have a lot of simulation models, a lot of models in general that represents exactly the same system but with different point of view, is to ensure the consistency uh, be, uh, across all these representations. And here, the, the bridge um, guarantees this consistency by automating um, the translation, the transformation of, uh, of models from one environment to another, uh, applying exactly the same rule. And it also saves a lot of time uh, from engineer time with, that have really no added value. And we can invest this engineer time on valuable tasks. In the future, bridge, the bridge will be extended to other types of elements. So far, we have seen the modes and state machine, the functions, the functional exchange, the functional chain, and the data. But we, th we can think about the components, the node, the physical node. We can think about the requirements or the property values, and so on and so forth. So we can, um, there, there are rooms here to make this bridge even better. So what about the, the release of this bridge? Stay tuned on LinkedIn. You will have information from uh, OBO and Thales about, uh, about this bridge when it will be made available um, outside of Thales. Meanwhile, you are feel, feel free to reach me and um, you can reach me on, on LinkedIn and uh, to in order to share your needs so we can integrate your needs in the in the roadmap thank you a lot and stay tuned